Chaksuran militanyena tasmai shri gurave namaha Nama om Vishnu padaya Krishna pristaya bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesh Sunyavadi Paschachyadeshatarine Vanchakaupa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're reading from the Krishna book. We're hearing about the pastimes of Lord Krishna as they are described in the 10th canto by Sukadeva Goswami to Maharaj Pariksit. <laughs> So now we're now we're on chapter twenty one. We're going to hear about how the gopis are attracted by the flute. So we're hearing about the pastimes of Lord Krishna between the ages of five and ten. He he'd grown up a bit. It's in the stage between the age of five and ten called Poganda. And he's going into the forest with the cows, with the cowherd boys. They take the cows into the forest every day. So this chapter is describing, well we heard in the last chapter also, uh, chapter 20 was describing descriptions of autumn. The autumn season is very beautiful there after the rainy season. And there's many flowers and everything becomes very green. So with the autumn season the water in the lakes and the rivers becomes nice and clear and there's lotus flowers blowing, uh, growing there. So, because of Vrindavan, the, the beauty of the planet Earth is appreciated. There is nowhere, anywhere within the universe as beautiful as the holy land of Vrindavan, where the twelve forests of Vrindavan are. So Krishna enters the forest along with all the cows and the cowherd boys and Krishna is very happy to see the beauty of the forest. 
ริชนานะคะก็มีความสุขมากนะคะตอนนี้ท่านเนี่ยได้เข้าป่านะคะไปกับเพื่อนเพื่อนเด็กเลี้ยงวัวด้วยกันเนี่ยพอเห็นความสวยของป่าผมก็ทรงมีความสุขมาก Now there are many beautiful flowers and the, so the nice smell of all the flowers there and there are many bees drones of bees humming so you can hear the bees and you can hear all the birds chirping. So all these different living entities they were all very happy. The birds, and the trees, and the plants, and the bees. Nobody was troubling them. They were they were they were not in any anxiety. And Krishna and Lord Balaram and all the cowherd boys, as they would enter into the forest, they would play their flutes. And especially Lord Krishna, who is very expert in playing the flute. So the gopis would hear Krishna play the flute, and they would all listen to Krishna, and they would be attracted that oh, Krishna plays the flute so nicely. And so hearing Krishna play the flute, they would remember their pastimes with Krishna, and their minds would become disturbed, and they would be unable to describe. Nice, they 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 would they would become disturbed remembering their pastimes with Krishna, and they couldn't properly describe Krishna's playing the flute. And they would remember how Krishna dressed, how he decorated himself with a peacock feather on his head, like a, an actor, like a dancing actor, and he had blue flowers over his ear. And he had a beautiful uh, golden yellow cloth around him, and he has a garland, vijayanti garland, a vijayanti necklace, garland around his neck. Then Krishna would play the flute, and so he'd fill the flute with nectar from his lips, and the gopis would remember. Krishna in this way. And when Krishna would go into the forest, all the cowherd boys, none of them were wearing shoes. They were all barefooted, and the, the, when they would walk in the forest, they would leave their footprints on the ground, so everyone could see the footprints of Lord Krishna and his companions, the cowherd boys. They could see their footprints on the ground in the forest of Vrindavan. <laughs> So 
So Krishna was very expert in playing the flute. It, it didn't just only attract the gopis, it would attract people all over the creation, all the living entities who heard it. They would all become captivated by the sound of Krishna playing the flute. So we're going to hear in this chapter, we're going to hear how different gopis, how they describe Krishna and how they remember Krishna and we will see why they are the best of all the devotees. So one gopi, one gopi said to the others, she said, the perfection of the eyes is to see Krishna and Balaram enter the forest playing their flutes. People who, who can see Krishna in this way, if they see Krishna in their mind, maybe they see Krishna internally just with their mind or maybe they see Krishna actually with their eyes. But both ways, this is the perfection of meditation. Samadhi, samadhi means to be absorbed, it means that you're, that you're fully absorbed in trance, just thinking about this one object. And so the gopi show us that the perfection of meditation and samadhi is to remember the pastimes of Krishna. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that one who remembers him, he is the topmost yogi, he is the best of all the yogis. Another gopi, she said that Krishna and Balaram, when they go in the forest with the cows, it's like they're they're on a stage and it's like they're just like actors going to play. Krishna is in yellow colored cloth and Balaram is in blue colored cloth and they they have these they have these uh, twigs of mango trees. They get the twigs from mango trees and they get bunches of flowers in their hand and garlands of lotus flowers. And sometimes they're singing with their friends, they all get, they all sing together. So 
So one gopi said to the other gopi, she said, just see Krishna and Balaram look so beautiful. And another gopi said, just think about this bamboo flute. What pious activities this flute must have done because he's tasting the nectar of Krishna's lips. And the, go the, gopis, the gopis said, actually, that nectar from the lips of Krishna, that's meant for us. Krishna likes to kiss us, so we should enjoy that nectar. How can that flute, just a piece of bamboo, how is he getting the nectar? Why he gets the nectar from Krishna's lips? Why he, she should get the nectar from Krishna's lips? But the mother and father of the flute, they must be very happy because they can see their, their child, the flute, that is doing nice service for Krishna. So the, the, the trees, they get the water from the lake and from the rivers. So the bamboo tree grows also from the water from the lake and the rivers. So all the water and lakes of the, and rivers of Vrindavan, they were all happy and they were full of lotus flowers and they were thinking, Oh, our son, the bamboo, is so good. He's enjoying the nectar of Krishna's lips. So the bamboo trees which are on the bank of the river they're very happy to see their son doing service for Krishna. Just like a mother and father in the, in the, in the, in the, among human beings, a mother and father who are advanced in devotional service, they will also be happy to see their children engage in service for Krishna. So the trees were so happy that they were giving so much honey. There was honey flowing from the beehives hanging from their branches. So another, another gopi spoke about Krishna and she said, Our Vrindavan is describing the glories of this earth. Vrindavan is, a, the, is showing the greatness of this earth planet. Because this planet 
This, in Vrindavan, we have the lotus feet, the lotus footprints of Lord Krishna everywhere. And when Govinda plays his flute, then all the peacocks become mad. Just like when the clouds rumble, the peacocks all dance, they become mad, they become ecstatic. So when Krishna plays a flute, the peacocks also become ecstatic. And when the peacocks become ecstatic, they all dance. And when they dance, all the other animals and all the trees and plants, they all look at the peacocks and they're all stunned. And they hear, they stand there and they listen to the sound of Krishna's flute and they all feel great ecstasy hearing Krishna play his flute. So, so this is not possible on any other planet. It's only possible on this planet. So the gopis, the gopis were sim simple women and girls. But they knew a lot of Vedic knowledge. And they would learn the Vedic knowledge just by hearing from Brahmanas and from spiritual teachers. They didn't read books, they didn't go to school, but they just heard people talk about the Vedic knowledge and they would learn everything. Then another gopi said, Oh, look, just see the deer. Although the deer's a dumb animal, they're approaching Krishna, they're approaching Lord Krishna. And when they hear that, when Krishna and Balaram, when they play the flute, then the deer and, and the husband of the deer, the, the, the stag, the male deer, they, they come and they offer obeisances unto Krishna and, and they look at him with great love. <laughs> So the gopis actually, they were envious of the deer. They were envious of the deer because the deer would come with their husband to do service for Krishna. But the gopis' husbands, they didn't like to do service for Krishna. The gopis thought these deer are more fortunate, they're more lucky than us. Our husbands, they don't like to serve Krishna, but the deer, his husband's willing to serve Krishna. 
แต่เดนี้กโปโกเปก็จะคิดว่าพวกกวางเนี่ยโชคดีกว่ากว่าชันเสียอีกเพราะว่าสามีของชันเนี่ยไม่ชอบในการรับใช้กฤษณาแต่ว่ากวางเนี่ยเขาได้รับใช้กฤษณาทั้งตัวเขาด้วยแล้วก็ทั้งสามีเขาด้วย And whenever the gopis want to go to Krishna, to go to be with Krishna, or to serve Krishna, then the gopis' husbands are not happy. They don't like it. So another gopi said, "Krishna is dressed so nicely. He he." He, he attracts all kinds of creatures. He attracts all kind. No. ก็บูปีอีกนานหนึ่งนะคะก็กล่าวว่าก็ใช่เนี่ยทรงแต่งแต่งตัวสวยงามมากนะคะซึ่งมันดึงดูดทุกคนนะคะผู้ที่พบเห็น Yeah, the 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 the, the cowherd ladies they have to do many ceremonies, different ceremonies or, you know, traditions which they have in the village. And when they see Krishna, then they become inspired to do all of these different ceremonies for the pleasure of Krishna. <laughs> And even the wives of the heaven, the, the the demigods in heaven, they become attracted after hearing the sound of Krishna's flute. And the demigods in heaven, these 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 ladies, they're traveling with their husbands. In the airplanes, enjoying the company of their husbands, but when they hear the sound of the flute, then they become oh, they become disturbed. ที่เขาจะเดินทางไปทั่วกับสามีของตนใช่ไหมคะก็เดินทางอยู่เรื่อยๆแต่เวลาได้ยินเสียงของกฤษณาเสียงคุยของกฤษณาเนี่ยพวกนางก็จะเหมือนกับหยุดนิ่งแล้วก็อยากจะหาเสียงนานาว่ามาจากไหน Yeah when they hear the sound of Krishna's flute then their hair you know ladies always tie their hair up and so their hair their hair becomes loosened and they and the, and they have belts around their waist These belts are usually tight because you know they don't like to look fat. They like to look nice and thin. But these tight belts, the belts are slackened when they hear the sound of Krishna's flute. แล้วก็เวลาพวกนางได้ยินเสียงของกฤษณาใช่ไหมคะผมที่มัดไว้ตึงเนี่ยมันก็เริ่มหลวงขึ้นแล้วก็เข็มขัดที่รับไว้ที่เอวอย่างแน่นใช่ไหมคะก็เริ่มหลวงความจริงเขาจะใส่ให้แน่นเพราะว่าไม่อยากจะให้ดูอ้วนเนี่ยอยากจะดูให้พอมมันดีแต่ว่าเวลาได้ยินเสียงคุยกฤษณาเนี่ยมันจะหลวง So these ladies they were traveling in the airplanes with their husbands their demigods but they could hear the sound of Krishna's flute so this shows us that sound of Krishna's flute would go everywhere to all the corners of the universe เพราะฉะนั้นนะคะพวกพวกมเหสีบนสวรรค์ค่ะที่กําลังเดินท่องเที่ยวไปทั่วโลกด้วยเครื่องบินของสามีเนี่ยบนท้องฟ้าเนี่ยก็ยังได้ยินเสียงของกฤษณะเสียงคุยของกฤษณะนะคะนั่นก็หมายความว่าเสียงคุยของกฤษณะเนี่ยไม่ได้ดังที่เดียวนะคะแต่ว่าดังไปทั่วทุกคน And the gopis they knew about these demigods and how they're traveling in these airplanes The gopis knew about all of this. They could describe it. Then another gopi, she describes about how the cows become affected when they hear the sound of Krishna's flute. 
พวกวัวนะคะว่าวัวเนี่ยมีความสุขยังไงเวลาที่พวกเขาเนี่ยได้ยินเสียงคุยของคริชนา When they hear Krishna play the flute, it's like there's some nectar coming, and the the cows they have these long ears, so they put out the long ears to catch the nectar of the flute. And the and the the calves, the calf of the cow, they're they're trying to drink the milk from their mothers, from their mothers' nipples. You know they have the, the the nipples of the cow, mother cow, in their mouth. They're trying to get the milk, but when Krishna plays the flute, they cannot suck the milk. They become stunned with devotion. And when they hear the sound of Krishna's flute, then the tears come from the eyes of the calves, and they, it's like they're embracing Krishna. So even the cows and the calves in Vrindavan. They know how to cry for Krishna. t h e s the perfection of Krishna consciousness is to be able to cry for Krishna. Mm. We cry. We can cry for our money. We can cry for our family. We can cry for our boyfriend or our girlfriend, but we cannot cry for Krishna. We need to learn to cry for Krishna. ปัจจุบันที่เราเป็นกันอยู่ก็คือเราจะร้องไห้สำหรับเงินของเราเราจะร้องไห้สำหรับคนในครอบครัวญาติของเราหรือเราจะร้องไห้สำหรับแฟนของเราหรือว่าคนรักของเรานะแต่ว่าเราเนี่ยจะไม่ร้องไห้สำหรับพระเจ้าเพราะฉะนั้นเราจะต้องฝึกที่จะร้องไห้สำหรับพระเจ้า So another young Gopi, young Gopi, she said to her mother, my dear mother, the birds are all looking at Krishna playing on his flute. แล้วก็ Gopi คนหนึ่งนะคะก็บอกว่าพวกนกเนี่ยนกทุกตัวเนี่ยก็มองไปที่กิชนามองดูกิชนาเล่นเอ่อมองดูกิชนาเป่าคุณ And it appears like they've forgotten everything, and they're just sitting there, just hearing the sound of Krishna's flute. เหมือนกับว่าพวกเขาเนี่ยลืมทุกสิ่งทุกอย่างไปเลยแล้วก็ยืนนิ่งแล้วก็มองกิชนาเป่าคุณ So you can understand these birds in Vrindavan. They're not ordinary birds, but they're great devotees. They're great sages, and they've come just to hear Krishna's flute. So. Sometimes, it ha like that, great devotees they may take birth as birds just to be in Krishna's pastimes, to see Krishna's pastimes, and to hear Krishna play the flute. พระอาจารย์ก็เหมือนกันนะคะกับสาวกผู้ยิ่งใหญ่นะคะอาจจะมาเกิดเป็นนกเพื่อที่จะดูลีลาของพระเจ้า So actually, it's, it's like these birds. It's like they're great. They were great scholars. They had a lot of Vedic knowledge. That they they took to Krishna's. They wanted to hear Krishna's sound, the sound of Krishna's flute, 
And so they gave up studying the Vedas and they came as birds just to hear Krishna play the flute. Then the river Yamuna, the river Yamuna wants to also take the dust from the lotus feet of Krishna. So when the river Yamuna hears the sound of Krishna's flute, then that time then the water comes, takes the dust from Krishna's flute, from Krishna's feet. Usually in the Yamuna they may be like quite heavy waves, but when the Krishna plays the flute, then the waves become very gentle and the lotus flowers are there just to present, to give to Krishna. So in the autumn season it becomes very hot, the sun can be very strong. So at that time also some clouds in the sky would appear to come over Krishna and Balaram to protect them. And the clouds will be like an umbrella over the head of Krishna and Balaram to make friends with Krishna. And there's a class of ladies, there's a class of girls in Vrindavan, they're aborigine, means they're not very, you know, they're not educated, they're just tribal people, aborigine people. And they also become attracted by Krishna's flute. So they take the dust from Vrindavan and they smear it on their faces and on their breasts and makes everything red. Their faces become red and their breasts all become red from the touch of that dust. So these girls, these Aborigine ladies, they're, they're very lusty, but when, when their lovers would touch their breasts, they would not be very much happy. But when they saw Krishna walking in the forest and they saw that from Krishna's feet, some of the red dust from Krishna's feet would fall on the ground, they would take that dust and they would put it on their breasts and they would feel very happy. So they were not satisfied when their lovers touched their breasts, but when they took that dust from Krishna's feet, and put it on their breasts, then they felt very happy. So, 
สัมผัสไปที่หน้าอกของนางเท่ากับตอนที่พวกนางเนี่ยได้เอาฝุ่นใต้พระบาทของคริสนาเนี่ยมาลูกมาทาที่อกของตน So this has an important message for us. This tells us that all of our lusty desires can be satisfied when we come when we become Krishna conscious. ตรงนี้ก็เป็นสิ่งที่ให้เราเรียนรู้ได้ว่าอารมณ์ราคาของเราทั้งหมดเนี่ยสามารถเติมเต็มได้ถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยมาเป็น Krishna จิตสำนึกอย่าง Nothing, nothing else is going to satisfy us. Then another gopi began to praise Govardhan Hill, and she said, "Oh, this Govardhan Hill is so fortunate because he's getting association with Krishna and Balaram, who are walking on it." So. Govardhan is always the lotus feet of Krishna are always walking on the Govardhan hill. So Govardhan hill is so fortunate. And the Govardhan hill also gives nice water for Krishna to drink and for Krishna to wash his hands and feet in. And there are nice fruits and different vegetables and grass growing on the Govardhan hill, which are very good for the cows and for Krishna. So Govardhan Hill knows how to please Krishna by pleasing his devotees, by pleasing the cows and the cowherd boys. When Krishna and Balaram travel in the forest of Vrindavan playing their flute, they make friends with. All kinds of living entities, moving and non-moving. The moving creatures, like the animals, they become stunned and they stop. And all the non-moving creatures, like the trees and the plants, they began to shiver in ecstasy. So Krishna and Balaram are cowherd boys. So they carry a rope with them because when they milk the cow, they have to bite. They have to tie up the back leg. They use their, this rope, so they would always carry this rope on their shoulder. So all Krishna and Balaram, although they're the supreme lord. They also played just like cowherd boys and carried this rope on their shoulder. So in this way, the gopis of Vrindavan and Govardhan. They were always absorbed in thinking about Krishna and talking about his different pastimes. So this is why Lord Chaitanya said, "Of all the devotees, the gopis are the greatest devotees because they are always thinking of Krishna." พอฉะนั้นนะคะพร
รองเจ้าเจตเนียก็ทรงบอกว่าในบรรดาสาวกเนี่ยสาวกที่ยิ่งใหญ่ที่สุดเนี่ยก็คือพวกโกปีพอพวกนางเนี่ยและลึกถึงคริชนาอยู่เสมอ No, the gopis were not born in a, a Brahmana family or a Shatri family. They were in a family of Vaishyas, and they were not very rich. They were simple village people. So they had knowledge from the brahmanas, but their only purpose, they only wanted to think of Krishna. That was their only thought. Okay, so that's the end of the chapter. We will stop. Ask if there's any questions. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. I, I, I'm very lucky to today to associate with you and with along with many devotees. And I like to say that the uh, animal in Vrindavan, even the trees, they they are very much attached to Krishna. They love Krishna so much that even the cows are crying for Krishna, and we are not crying. We are. We are, as you said, we are crying for our family members and wife and children, mother, sons. So, um, in that case, we become lower than animal. Is that is it, is it right to say like this, Gurudev? Well, these are not ordinary animals. These cows, the cows in Vrindavan, the peacocks in Vrindavan, the birds in Vrindavan. They're all very special creatures. To take birth in Vrindavan is not ordinary. Okay, so they are very special, special uh, living and special souls. Yes. Uh, every living entity born in the dam, they're very special. Not an ordinary birth. So we always give great respect for all the creatures, inhabitants of the Dham, the inhabitants of the Dham, the Dham Vasis. Dham Vasis are not only people, all the animals, even the hogs. Mm -hmm. And the trees, very special. Yes. Did you translate this, Archana? Yes, Guru. Pashanan Pruji, na ha, ko tham wa, tong ni nai, lao jai saamad, hen dai wa, thi vinda wa nia thu kon, mai tai lu hua, lu wa, hua nia, hao ka jai long hai hai krishna, tai wa, pas chuba nia, lao ka na, lao ben kon, lao yang ba wa, long hai hai krishna, mai pe le, tai lao nia, mua tai long hai hai ka sing in un yu, pashan tong ni nia, man jai, lao jai bong dai mai, wa lao nia, tam, ning kwa sat se i, แต่ทีนี้กูรู้มาแล้วบอกว่าสัตว์ที่เป็นดาวันเนี่ยเขาไม่ได้เป็นสัตว์ธรรมดาทั่วไปนะคะเขาเป็นดวงวิญญาณผู้ยิ่งใหญ่นะเพราะฉะนั้นทุกสิ่งเวลาเราบอกว่าดามบาสีนะคะหรือว่าชาวชาวดามเนี่ยนั้นมันไม่ได้หมายความว่าคนอย่างเดียวแต่หมายถึงสัตว์ทุกชนิดที่อยู่ที่นั่นพวกเขาก็ล้วนแล้วเป็นดามบาสีด้วยกันทั้งนั้นนะคะเพราะว่าเขาไม่ใช่ดวงวิญญาณธรรมดาทั่วไปเขาเป็นดวงวิญญาณที่เป็นที่รักยิ่งของคริชนาเขาถึงได้ถือกำเนิดที่สถานที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์นั้นสุดเราต้องเห็นทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ่งทุกสิ
เราควรที่จะให้ความเคารพนะกับสัตว์ทุกชนิดที่บรรดาวันที่เวลาเราเจอนะเพราะพวกเขาเนี่ยไม่ใช่สัตว์ธรรมดาทั่วไปแบบที่เราคิด Just like we heard the gopis, they're describing the birds, their great sages. Maybe in their previous life, they were great sages, become birds to hear the sound of Krishna's flute. The peacocks, when Krishna will play the flute, the peacocks will gather around Krishna, and they will all dance. And Krishna will play the flute, and he will also dance. And the peacocks will dance, and their feathers will fall off, and Krishna will take feather and put in his hair. <laughs> The parrots in Vrindavan, there are many parrots, and it said these parrots are messengers for between Krishna and Radharani. And of course, every tree is a Kalpa Briksha tree. And the dust, the dust of the Vrindavan, it's all Chintamani. So we should not see the holy dam with material vision. We shouldn't think, oh, this is poor. This place is not developed. It's a transcendental home. It's a transcendental abode. It's a, the dam. The Lord resides there eternally. <laughs> Krishna's, Krishna's there. We don't have the eyes to see him, but Krishna's there. Dham means the place where Lord Krishna resides eternally. The only difference between Goloka and Goku. Goku is on the earth planet and Goloka is in the spiritual world. But on Goku, on this planet, Sometimes Krishna's manifest, sometimes not. But on Goloka, Krishna's always there. You can always see him in Goloka. But in Goku, sometimes you can see him, sometimes. So Krishna has his prakat lila and aprakat. Aprakat sometimes you can see his manifest, but it's not very often. And according to our time, but in the terms of eternal time. You know, once in every day of Brahma. ก็ทีนี้ใช่มั้ยคะคริชนาก็จะปรากฏเป็นเอ่อช่วงช่วงนะคะอย่างเช่นเอาเอาหนึ่งวันของพระพรหมอะไรเงี้ยคริชนาก
Okay. Any other question? Okay. Anybody? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Sula Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, Kanapriya. Uh, my question is, uh, we're trying to remember Krishna. That's why we are trying to do devotional service, right? And uh, right now, the situation, my situation is, uh, even though we're trying to remember Krishna, but it's not really come in my mind, but it just come like before uh, I used to do very nice bhakti and I used to remember a lot to Krishna. But right now, hardly remembering of Krishna, but just remember that I used to do very good bhakti. Right now I have nothing. So can you please help me by answering me that what should I do to be more serious again? in Krishna consciousness and to remember Krishna again, Guru Maharaj? Well, the main thing you you have to do is to chant regularly and you have to associate with devotees. Yes, Guru Maharaj. And you have to also read, you have to maybe hear, hear. If you're not able to come to the centre, then at least in your home, you read, you take the books and you read and you talk to your children and tell your children about Krishna and discuss with your husband also. You know, you're fortunate that your husband is also a devotee, so you can discuss with him about Krishna consciousness, you know, and together the two of you can be Krishna conscious, help each other. That is household life, you help each other to remember Krishna. Yes. Pradeva had a question. Yes. Pradeva, like you just said, um, every desire we have, let be dasyan or nasi, should be towards the Lord. Um, I always have had this desire till today, right from the beginning, that I definitely go there, want to be a manjuri or a gopi or, you know, someone to be personally able to see the Lord, touch the Lord and serve the Lord and see the smile on his face. But every time I'm only told Gurude, you shouldn't even think of this. Just to be a grass, one has to be so qualified. We are not even able to reach that level. And you're talking about gopis or manjuris is next to impossible. So that, you know, that thought in the mind also, it's like everybody says, don't even think about it. But I don't know why, it just won't leave my mind. And then today I heard you saying that. I felt very assured, good. But again, uh, Gurudev, just can you clarify on this point, Gurudev? I'm just. What my point? What was? What did you hear me say? Which particular point? Not where you said that you know uh, any desires you have, even lusty desires, oh. keep that centered on Lord Krishna. But over here, like I said, I have a desire to be a manjari or a gopi so I can even touch the Lord or see the Lord smiling and uh -huh. see their pastime. Yeah, yeah, serve. okay. Well, you have to understand Lord Chaitanya teaches us to be the servant of the servant of the servant. So there are many, many millions of gopis and manjaris and sakis who are all taking part in Krishna's pastimes and you become a servant of one of them. You, you get involved, you, you'll be taken, if you, you can be taken into one of the groups, you see, mm. and they have many groups and then in the different groups you get to do some service for the Lord, yeah. for the Divine Couple. So it's possible, you know, you can become like that, you, can, you could become a Manjari or a Saki, it's possible, like but of course. All the way down also. Yeah, so right. You have to be satisfied to be the servant yeah. of the servant, of yes. the ser many times the servant, you know. The, mm. You don't get to immediately go and serve the king, but you become, you know, you get trained first of all yeah. before mm. you go and serve the king. You have to be. So there's a lot of uh, preparation and preliminaries. Mm. 
to go through. So you have to be patient. You want something, you want that. You know, you have to be, you have to be patient and wait for that opportunity to come. Gurudev and I tell you honestly, I don't know why down my heart. I know it seems very good to be even a leaf in that holy land, being stepped on, touched by God, but somehow the heart just doesn't agree. I know I'm not purified that, to that level, or will never probably be, but just the thought doesn't agree. I just want to, I don't know, it's a personal thing, personal desire, but it's just, you know, Dasi, 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 in the end all the way, never mind, but that's what. Mm. Well, you have to be patient, you know, don't be, yeah. don't be a mad person. No, I don't mind in millions of lives, but I'll wait, I'll wait until that happens, mm -hmm. until I purify to that extent. But certainly you can experience the purification of the Krishna conscious process. That is the, the, the point, you know. We have, to, we have to understand that all our material contamination can be removed. All of our desires for enjoying material sense gratification, they can all be purified by the Krishna conscious process, by hearing and chanting and serving doing service for the Lord is very important to keep yourself engaged in the Lord's service. And hearing, do a lot of, you have to do a lot of reading and hear again and again. And don't worry so much about the fact that you've read this, you know, sometimes people think, I've heard this before, I've read this. Uh, you know, it, the Krishna conscious process is not about information, but rather it's about transformation. And the change, it should be the change in the heart, you see, mm. that you actually change. Mm. Archana. Yes, you ศักดิ์สิทธิ์หรืออะไรอย่างงี้ใช่มั้ยคะศักดิ์สิทธิ์นี้กุมารก็ขอแปลในส่วนที่กุมารตอบแล้วกันนะคะเนื่องจากวัน
Raghunath Goswami that we want to under, understand the pastimes of Radha and Krishna, we have to go through these people because it's by their mercy that we can actually understand the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. You cannot approach Radha and Krishna's pastimes without going through the mercy of Lord Chaitanya and his associates. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to follow. You have to understand the importance of Lord Chaitanya and his teachings, that he's teaching us how to understand the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. You wouldn't even know about Radha and Krishna if it wasn't for Lord Chaitanya. Mm. So it's very important to go through, follow the process. Gurudev, I understand all that and I completely, 10 to 110 percent agree with that. What I mean is, what I'm being told is, you should just be happy uh, uh, with being the servant of Lord Krishna, uh, sorry, Chaitanya. Don't think that you can actually reach Goloka Vrindavan because you're not that able and you may not be that ever. So you never know. Just be happy even if you get admitted to where Lord Chaitanya is performing his pastimes. That is what I mean, even after everything. Well, that's somebody's idea, somebody's mood. You don't have to have that mood. You're entitled uh -huh. to have your own mood. You don't have to. You don't have to go along with what they're. They may be very attractive. Just they may be very happy. They just want to be in Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan party, but you can also go on to the pastimes of Krishna. Certainly, Prabhupada wants us to know. He wants us to worship Krishna, and he taught. He gave us the Krishna book. He gave us all the Chaitanya Charitamrita. He wants us to understand all these things. And Lord Chaitanya's associates, they were all from Radha and Krishna Leela, you know, practically everybody. They're all gopis and they're all discussing Radha and Krishna. And so if you go into the association of Lord Chaitanya, it's going to bring you to Radha and Krishna. Thank you so very much, Gurudev. Thank you for clearing me on this. Thank you very much. Okay. อาชนะมัจจิยิบันทรานสเลตเยสเยสมาดีนะฮะก็ถามว่าบางครั้งเนี่ยมัจจิเคยได้ยินมาว่าเอ่อเล่าเนี่ยไปถึงราชาคริช
So she said she get to chat with one devotee from America, and the devotee was telling her that uh, we should chant. Lord Chaitanya recommend us to chant 64 rounds every day. Uh, but she said so now as she know that we are doing 16 round uh, minimum and we do extra but uh, not really 64 so how, how can we understand this well Prabhupada give us that concession he thought Prabhupada thought it's very difficult for us to chant 64 rounds so Prabhupada said, you must chant at least 16 rounds and try to chant more. If, if we say everybody has to chant 64 rounds, there will be very few people, devotees. So Prabhupada said, chant 16 rounds and do service the rest of the day. Be engaged in devotional service for the rest of the day. So Prabhupada was happy if the devotees would do that, if they would do t maybe go for Sankirtan or go out for preaching or do deity worship or they're doing some other service in the temple and every day chant at least six, 16 rounds. So it's nice if you can chant 64 rounds, but you know, it's not everybody can do that. The main thing is to chant and to ch Quality is also important. It's not just only quantity. You must be careful to avoid offenses. So now when, when you're not working, when you have no job or lockdown, then you have more time, then you can chant 64 rounds. And if you're not chanting, then you can be reading the books, you can be worshipping Krishna. So Lord Chaitanya, he said, chant 64 rounds, that was a different time, it was 500 years ago, it was a different kind of civilization from today. So according to time and circumstance, Prabhupada made some adjustment. He still wants us to chant. The important, the principle is to chant, but the quantity is adjusted according to the time and circumstances. So 
ดีแล้วแต่ว่าให้มีสิ่งสําคัญก็คือคุณภาพของการสวดมนต์ให้ว่าให้เป็นไปอย่างดี So Prabhupada is an acharya. He can do that. He can change these kind of rules. Lord Chaitanya said, chant 64 rounds. And Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati also wanted 64 rounds. He said, if you don't chant 64 rounds, then you're fallen. <laughs> But it's important also to do service. If everybody just sits and chants all day, nobody does any service, no preaching, no book distribution, nobody wants to cook for the deities, they all say, oh, I'm chanting, I have no time, then it's not good. So you have to understand the instructions of the acharyas. And you have to hear from the Acharya, Prabhupada, you never see anywhere Prabhupada says you have to chant 64 rounds, but Prabhupada said you have to chant 16 rounds. And you have to avoid offences when you're chanting. And, and, but in some days, if you chant 64 rounds, it's very good. But it's important to do service. You want to also do some preaching work and do service. But if you say, oh, I'm chanting, I can't do it, I can't do anything, I can only chant, then that's not very good. Prabhupada said everybody must do some service. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other question? Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. For Good the... just one more. Yeah. Good day, when you were saying that last time, you said that Gopi's family and the husband were not happy when they would serve Lord Krishna. Not happy in what way? They definitely would be liking Lord Krishna, but what would make them unhappy? The gopi was unhappy that her husband was not eager to serve Krishna. The gopi thought the deer is more fortunate because the, the deer came with their husband to see Krishna and to hear the flute. But the gopis thought, my husband doesn't like to come, he doesn't like it when I go to Krishna. And he doesn't come with me when I go to Krishna. Mm -hmm. 
ทั้งสามีภรรยาทําการรับใช้คริชนาเนี่ยเขาจะมีความสุขมากตรงนั้นเนี่ยมันหมายความว่าเขาก็รู้สึกว่าเออทำไมแบบสามีของเราไม่แฮปปี้เวลาเรารับใช้คริชนาหรือว่าทําไมเราไม่ได้มารับใช้คริชนาด้วยกันอันนี้คือสิ่งที่พวกครูปีคิด Thank you for this. Okay. Do you remember the gopis also have envy? Like uh, they are telling the gopis are envious. Uh, means they watch them, Do you remember? Gopis are envious. Yeah. So. Yeah. The, they also have. The, the gopi was envious of the deer because because the deer could come with their husband. And she thought, "I wish my husband would also be a devotee. I wish my husband also could could take time to come and see Krishna and to hear Krishna. But my husband doesn't like me to go to Krishna. So the gopi thought the deer is more fortunate than me because the deer comes with her husband. พวกกูปีก็มีความอิจฉาด้วยหรอคะบุญมาดาใช่ไหมคะแสดงว่าบุญมาบอกว่าความอิจฉาเนี้ยของพวกนางที่มีก็คือมีเพราะว่าแบบว่าเห็นทั้งเห็นว่ากวางเนี่ยได้รับใช้คริชนาเป็นคู่เป็นแบบว่าสามีภรรยาได้รับใช้คริชนาด้วยกันแบบนี้มันไม่ได้เป็นความอิจฉาแบบว่าอยากจะเด่นกว่าอยากจะดังกว่าเนี่ย so yeah they were envious that they're 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 Husband is more Krishna conscious than my husband. <laughs> I wish my husband could be a devotee. Yeah, <laughs> the flute. Is it a gop? Yeah. Is it a gopi? Yes, yes, Guru Maharaj. Is it a gopi because the gopis are telling that she is more fortunate like that? No, flute is not a gopi. The flute is a bamboo flute. It's an inanimate object. But the gopis are talking that this flute is so fortunate. It's enjoying the nectar from Krishna's lips. Yeah, the gopis are also a little envious of the flute, because the flute, if Krishna is playing, filling the flute with nectar from his lips, and the gopis say that nectar is meant for us. We're meant to enjoy the nectar from Krishna's lips, but flute is not a gopi, no. Oh, so it doesn't have any consciousness. I thought it's. Uh... Like other well, in in the spiritual world, everything has consciousness. Yeah, we and Krishna's weapons and everything—they're all conscious. Yes, it's a very special personality. It's it's but it's it's described as a being being a male. <laughs> it's described the the the. Our son mentioned our son, so can't be Gopi, <laughs> but he's a servant, right? He's doing service for yes. Krishna. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so no more questions. We will stop here tonight. We we'll thank Archana very much. Thank you, Guru. Thank all the devotees for participation. Wish you all have a good day. Hare Krishna, Shri Prabhupada ki jai. Yeah. jai.